Hi developers, subscribers and friends. I'm Stefan Bertosz and today's video is about my lessons learned from the projects where I did migration from Java 8 slash Spring Boot 2.x into Java 17 slash Spring Boot 3.x. Why I think it's useful uh, to know this? Because you may run into the similar programs or issues like I had and you don't need to spend you don't need to spend hours uh, fixing it. I was doing uh, the exercise for a couple of applications by mm, using Spring Boot and some Spring modules like batch security integration, cloud gateway, uh, data GPA and so on. I will not mention all of these details in uh, this video, just the important ones or the ones which I think are good to know. All the links will be in the description of this video. So let's start. Obviously, if you upgrade uh, or if you want to upgrade to Spring Boot 3 version, you need also to upgrade Java version because that's a primary requirement from the Spring Boot team. And you can have some uh, issues with that, but this is not uh, in scope for this video. So I assume you can upgrade in general. And let's roll number one. So number one is um, module called Spring Batch, uh, which I also had to upgrade to use the latest versions. And basically there are two points to mention there in this. And the first one is that um, the changes are as well in the internal uh, tables which are using by the Spring Batch framework. So for example, some small changes are needed in the schemas. So we were using Oracle, so there needs to be some tweaking in the DDLs for that. And second point which I uh, found out is that some of the that some of the factory methods are were deprecated and you, you need to use the builders instead to create correctly the configurations. And if you want to know more, I have a video on that topic as well. How to automatically send a flat file with Spring Boot and Spring Integration. So check my YouTube channel, you would find a video on the topic. And other than that, I'm just showing you the what's new in Spring Batch. And basically you can skim through this if you want to have more details, what is really new under the hood or where you can have troubles if you are upgrading for from lower version. And similarly, point two is um, another module which I'm using and that's Spring Integration. Specifically from integration, I'm usually using the integration support for either the GMS or uh, SFTP. And in this, uh, I just wanted to, men to mention the the big change in the SFTP component and that's that they'll change the internal implementation uh, from JSF to Apache uh, Mina project which is uh, maybe not so important for you but if you have some you know, code which was dependent on some classes then you need obviously to change it and other than that if you want to know more just follow this link and basically you will see as well some other news which are there for the integration maybe here is the topic of sftp modules yeah you see that the library was like switched change number three number three is uh, spring security which is as well used heavily on my projects and there in the latest version there were a couple of changes uh, maybe the most important from my point of view or which my code hit was the deprecation of uh, the web security configure adapter. You can as well see this uh, in the links. And uh, there is a different way how you would configure uh, the security via the Java configuration. So previously you would extend the adapter like this. And now you would basically define a bean and then you know uh, call the methods and add the security there in this kind of a way which works yeah but it looks a bit different but just a bit of course otherwise uh, all 
a lot of things uh, remains the same here. Yeah, maybe there are some other changes which I needed to do, but it was more or less specific to the project and the config which we need. And number four is a change in the uh, Spring Data JPA. And basically that's quite a big change because they replaced uh, the old libraries with Jakarta. <laughs> so there were a lot of hits in the code where uh, you need to replace. Of course, you can replace all and so on. But just that you know that that was really um, enforced or added. And most probably you will need to do the same. And here is a link <laughs> to that where somebody is asking yeah, why it was uh, replaced. Yeah, so the answer is here. And next one is not directly related uh, to the data JPA, but uh, a program which is more specific because we are using Oracle as a database and we were using um, trunk function for dates in the in the jql queries and basically it stopped working here yeah. <laughs> with some greater uh, uh, higher versions you can have programs that some features which were not official or whatever hacky those stop working so there is a uh, workarounds how to solve this Either you will wait until they will implement this, or uh, what I am choosing is similar thing like they are describing in this post, and that is that you can uh, like create your own custom uh, Oracle dialect, and you can basically then add uh, a function, yeah, or re register a function which would be called I don't know Oracle trunk, and it will do the standard track yeah something like that and it really works yeah so i think it's good to know that you can still uh, customize that the next one is rest template so usually to call some rest api you are using rest template i say usually you can use whatever you want um, and that has also some changes so when you use rest template there are as well uh, mm, alternatives which you can use for the uh, underlying uh, like build, build in support and that it's either uh, Apache HTTP components which I'm using usually or Netty or OK HTTP or the standard uh, library supported JDK classes and what I found out that for the uh, representation um, when you use the HTTP components, they had changed the implementation to the version uh, of Apache HTTP components 5. And obviously with this version, you would, if you really build a production application, you usually use uh, some uh, trust store, key store, certificates and security and whatever. So there is a different kind of a conf configuration here. Uh, but what is also interesting is that they are encouraging you that you should not use uh, in future uh, the REST template, but instead the web client. Yeah. So as well, nice to know that uh, they are pushing this a bit in another direction. Okay, and another one which I was fighting a bit is emails, because we are sending emails from our applications directly from Spring. And there again is a change that um, you need to use Jakarta email or you should, yeah, I would say. So check this article, which version you can use uh, and so on. But in general, it's more or less uh, adding the correct dependency to send the email in the similar way, especially if you are using the helper classes, uh, I don't know, for the my messages and so on. The next one uh, is uh, AOP, where I also experienced some problems while migrating to the higher versions. And that was more or less uh, uh, throwing some warnings and as well, I think some errors. And the solution was that you should compile your code with, uh, with some flags like minus P parameters, which obviously was working before, but uh, uh, in the later version that is not there and and uh, the error message was something like it's missing some debug information so uh, about the parameters therefore the AOP 
was not working properly. So after this fix uh, in Gradle or Maven, whatever um, you use for your builds, and just um, add a parameter to the compile options. Another issue which I had uh, was about some strange error which I never seen before <laughs> and about uh, some kind of a casting and if I scroll more to the right it was something like that yeah it's not exactly the same but complaining that some of the classes or instances or whatever interfaces whatever are in unnamed module of the loader and basically it was pointing to the same loader class in Spring Boot obviously but uh, the message was a bit different. The problem is, and as well here, uh, there is some uh, clues how to fix it. Either you will wait until they provide a library which has these modules exposed properly, or you can use a hacky solution. And it means uh, you would add again some, um, some flags, uh, flags uh, to the, uh, Java run command and basically it says adds open and you know you would uh, add some packages which should be open uh, as unnamed modules yeah? and that could depend on you can as well add multiple flags and it would help you to run your application without those errors or you would need to um, wait for a fix from the library which is uh, which is there in the warnings or errors that this will be upgraded and exposed with the modules which are missing. And I think that's it. Yeah. So the video should be short today. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something new and that uh, it will help you not to <laughs> get stuck uh, too long or maybe you, you will at least uh, have some direction where to look on the links uh, and maybe you can solve the problems uh, related to the migration easier. So thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye guys.